I've reviewed probably 10 or 12 hardware wallets over the last four years, and this is by far the easiest one that I've ever used. What's up, guys? Today, I'm going to be reviewing this BitKey hardware wallet device from Square, which is the company that's behind Cash App. I've heard a ton about this product, and I'm excited to get to use it. It's very different than a traditional hardware wallet and that you're not having to back up and memorize a seed phrase. Instead, this is creating a multi-sig between this device, a device that Cash App holds up in the cloud, and your actual Cash App app on your iPhone or Android device. And so what I want to do for you guys today is take you through the setup and how to initialize this device and then how to send and receive Bitcoin to this device. And from what I've heard, this video might be totally unnecessary because this is apparently the easiest device in the history of hardware wallets to ever set up. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So the first thing that you need to do when you're using this wallet is go into the app store and look up the BitKey app. So then you'll just go ahead and click on this app. You'll know that it's the right one because it's made by Block Inc saying self custody and recovery tools so i'll just go ahead and click on get so once i've got the app i'm just going to go ahead and open it let's click on more options to see what our options are here so i can click on be a trusted contact i assume to be a trusted contact for someone else i can restore an existing of course i'm not going to do any of those things i'm just going to go ahead and click on set up a new wallet i'm going to wake my bitkey device by just pressing on the fingerprint reader here and it's saying do it until it has a white light if the device doesn't turn on we can charge it via the usb-c port here on the side hopefully you can see the usb-c port there let's go ahead and click on continue and pair so all we need to do here is hold the bitkey close to the iphone and it has gone ahead and paired it to our iPhone. Now all we need to do is set up our fingerprint. So I'm going to use my thumb. It's saying place your finger on the sensor until you see a blue light. Lift my finger and repeat 20 times, adjusting the position slightly until the light turns green. And that will save my fingerprint. So I'm just going to use my thumb here. Hopefully you can see. Eventually the light will turn green. All right, it's blue now, and now it's green. And so now that I'm seeing green on the device, I can click on Save Fingerprint here on my iPhone, and then it will rescan the device, it looks like. All right, so now it's saying we're going to back up our sensitive data to iCloud. My sensitive data in iCloud is encrypted and only accessible with my BitKey device. So it's going to store some encrypted file to iCloud. And this backup is basically a backup of the mobile key on our iPhones right now. So if we ever get a new phone, we're simply going to restore the wallet with the backup key that we're putting into iCloud right now. And then if the BitKey app ever became unavailable for some reason, if Square went out of business, we'll be able to use this emergency access document located in the iCloud drive to basically have a self-sovereign recover of our funds without having to talk to BitKey. So here we'll click on backup and this is just saving that emergency backup file to our iCloud. So now we're going to set up secure recovery communication channels. They're only going to reach out to these channels to notify us of wallet recovery attempts and privacy updates, nothing else. And so we're going to opt in to email, put in an email address here, and then we'll opt in to push notifications. And if you want to learn more about their security model, you can click here on learn more about wallet recovery. And basically what they're saying in this article I'll have a link to this article down in the description, is that they want to try to make you aware of attempts to access these funds, not because you're going to approve the funds from within your email account, but so that you can be aware if you're seeing something that didn't really happen, that you're getting notifications about attempts to access your funds outside of something that you would recognize. So it's really about alerting you and making you aware of attempts to access this money rather than a confirmation of saying like, hey, respond to this email address and we'll move the funds for you. And that's because most people's Gmail account is probably not as secure as the multi-sig that's being set up by BitKey here. So let's go ahead and continue. We want to get push notifications when we see transactions and we're probably okay just getting emails when there are BitKey updates. So here we are on our BitKey screen. We can tap here to hide the balance if we want, which is pretty cool. We can buy and sell Bitcoin and we can send and receive Bitcoin. But the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this device update available button because I want to make sure that my BitKey is on the latest firmware. So let's go ahead and click on update BitKey and then just put it right here next to our phones. And that process is incredibly simple. We're not dealing with ledgers or trezors or anything super complicated here. It's saying device is locked, that's funny. So I'm gonna click on got it, and then I'm going to unlock the device, and then click on update. And now hopefully it's ready to scan. Click on update again.
And so now it's, I guess, sending the update to the BitKey, the NFC. So that's crazy. That was super simple. All I did there was hold my thumb on the sensor the whole time to unlock the device and problem solved. So now that we've updated the firmware, we can go down to getting started and click on add Bitcoin. And we can see that we can either purchase Bitcoin using our local currency through BitKey and I assume through Cash App, or we can transfer Bitcoin from an exchange like Coinbase or Kraken or Gemini, or in the case of this demo, I'm going to be doing it from Cash App. We can click on add a trusted contact, which is an interesting option for people who want to add a backup, maybe a friend or a family member that they trust to help them recover their funds instead of relying on some other company. I'm going to skip this for now, but definitely be aware of that if that's a feature that you find interesting. We can click on customize transfer settings. This is going to allow us to set a daily spend limit that we're allowed to spend without having to use this device. And the reason that they can do that is that there's one key on your mobile device and there's one key that's held by Cash App. And so if, for example, I wanted to be able to spend 10 or 20 or $30 a day through this app without having to have this device, I can walk around with just my phone and have a two of three multi-sig basically and spend some amount of money that I define here without having to use this device to sign my transaction. So here I'm going to click on got it and I'm going to say that every day I'm okay sending $10 from this wallet without having to sign a transaction using my actual hardware device. And then all I have to do is scan the device. It's saying it's locked again, so I'm gonna try again. You actually really have to push down on this and make sure that the device is green. So there it went saying success. So if you're running into problems where it's saying it's locked, you do really have to like push down on this and make sure that it's showing green on the little LED in the middle. And then something else you can do here is add an additional fingerprint, which I think if you were using this all the time, I would probably set up multiple fingerprints and make sure that you're actually going through and mashing every side of your finger on it when you're doing the setup. Don't set it up the way that I did where I'm trying to look into the camera and do all this fancy at the same time. That's just going to give you a lot more robustness, you know, when you need to sign transactions with this in the future. So let's ignore that for now and go ahead and receive some Bitcoin from our Cash App. So we'll click on Cash App. Transfer Bitcoin from Cash App to BitKey. We'll click on Continue. And I'm going to send all 83,145 sats from Cash App into BitKey. And because this is a demo, I'm going to be sending it with priority so that hopefully we can see that the funds arrive pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and click on Next. It's saying I don't have enough money, but we'll click on Transfer anyway. Did a little face ID situation there. And now we're ready to go. And hopefully pretty soon we should see that about $75 showing up in this BitKey wallet. In the meantime, we can go ahead and investigate some of the settings. If we click on transfers, we'll see our daily limit there that we set up earlier. If we click on BitKey device, we'll see a bunch of model numbers and serial numbers and firmware versions and stuff like that. Charging percentage of the battery and fingerprints, and we can wipe the device from here. Appearance, we're using USD for our fiat, but we have a couple other fiat currencies we could use there. And then obviously we're going to use sats instead of Bitcoin. And you can choose to hide the Bitcoin performance if you want to do that. It's been a little down recently, so I'm a little sad. So I'm going to hide the Bitcoin performance. Got our notifications there. We've got app security, definitely unlock with face ID. Next, we've got mobile device. Devices. You can manage other mobile devices, and I would recommend that you probably only use this with a single mobile device at a time. Next, we've got our cloud backup, and you can see that we've successfully iCloud backed up our mobile key and our emergency access kit. And then we just got a notification here that our Bitcoin deposit from Cash App is now processing, so we'll go ahead and swipe that away. You can manage trusted contacts and recovery methods. Let's see recovery methods. We'll see on recovery methods, I've got my email set up. I've disabled SMS, which I would recommend that you do also. And then we've got push notifications enabled. And then down here, if you're really fancy, you can add a custom Electrum server instead of using just the default mempool. If you're running a node at home, definitely go ahead and do that. I feel like most people are not going to be doing that, but cool option for those that care about that. And then what's neat here is we don't have multiple UTXOs in our wallet right now, and maybe I should show that. Let's go ahead and deposit another UTXO from Coinbase. All right, so I went off screen here and I deposited $10 from Coinbase. So now I should have two UTXOs in my BitKey wallet. So now if I come over to this UTXO consolidation tab, it's going to tell me that I can consolidate these two UTXOs into a single UTXO. It's going to take 60 minutes because they're trying to do it at the lowest possible fees. And it's going to cost me about 25 cents to consolidate these two UTXOs. 
I'm not going to do that right now. And if you don't understand what UTXO consolidation is, I highly recommend you check out the video linked up in the cards and down in the description. It's a super important part of self-custody Bitcoin. But if you don't understand, it could like totally wreck you long-term. So make sure you understand that. And this is a really, really cool application built by Block that's going to allow you to super easily consolidate your UTXOs. And again, another great reason for beginners to check out the BitKey in general. So next, now that we've received all this Bitcoin to our BitKey multi-sig, let's go ahead and send some money out of the BitKey onto our Cash App, for example, where we might want to sell it for dollars. So let's go ahead and click on send. I'll go ahead and open my Cash App, click on the Bitcoin tab, click on this receive button go ahead and copy this back over to bitkey paste the address boom continue go ahead and send ten dollars and we should be able to send these ten dollars without having to use the bitkey because we set that up earlier in our settings let's go ahead and click on continue go ahead and get this confirmed in 10 minutes and continue again and then we'll just go ahead and send this bitcoin and it immediately sent those ten dollars because i set up the limit to ten dollars earlier so now if i send another transaction which i'll do here in a second i'm going to have to actually sign using the physical bitkey device let's go ahead and click on done click on send again we'll go ahead and paste that exact same address and send 10 more dollars of bitcoin and now immediately even if i put in one dollar it's saying i need bitkey approval required because i've gone over that ten dollar limit that i set up earlier in the video so let's go ahead and send 10 more dollars do priority of 10 minutes click on send and now i'm going to have to scan with the bit key i'm getting better at this got success and there you go i mean this look at the amount of time that we spent in this video i assume this video will be like 10 minutes doing this exact same process even with a new device like a ledger flex or a ledger stacks you know the ledger flex the ledger stacks the, the treasures the cold cards all these devices are probably more secure than this bitkey device but the amount of user experience that is needed to operate a device like this is almost none i would be comfortable giving a bitkey to my parents probably not my grandparents because they like don't really use phones but anyone that uses uses a phone can use a bit key if you used cash app before you can use a bit key and so if there's anyone in your life that like they're holding tens of thousands of dollars on a coinbase account and you're like hey man you need to learn about self-custody but you're worried about them messing up their seed phrase that you don't think they can use a ledger go get them a bit key this device you know not the same security guarantees as a regular hardware wallet but a lot more secure than an exchange, a lot more redundancy than an exchange, and just unbelievably simple to use. I've reviewed probably 10 or 12 hardware wallets over the last four years, and this is by far the easiest one that I've ever used. So that's it for today, guys. If you want a video in the future comparing the security benefits of, let's say, a Ledger Flex to something like a BitKey in the future, definitely let me know down in the comments. I'd be happy to make a video like that. I'm really excited by the BitKey and sort of the user experience benefits that it's giving to anyone that wants wants to dive into self-custody. In particular, I think that UTXO consolidation piece, even for people that are maybe more advanced than the average user of the BitKey, that UTXO consolidation piece, if that can be brought to devices like the Ledger or the Trezor or the Cold Card or even to like Sparrow Wallet or something like that in the future, that is going to be really huge for saving a lot of people a lot of money. If you guys want to learn more about hardware wallets, check out these videos here. And if you want to link up with other like-minded individuals, check out the link to the Discord down in the description. I love you guys. See you next week.